Y'all niggas got me hot. Yeah. It's been a long time, man. This whole know, lockdown man. stuff. But um, so what's everyone been saying? Lockdown stuff. With lockdown, how's life been? Because um, this is the first time we're all linking up. Well, that's mm-hmm. true. Probably. Like, how many months? Nearly a year. Bruv, almost. Yeah. Coming up to a year, COVID anniversary. Bruv, this, hey! this <coughs> time last year, yeah, we, we were on our way to 90s, baby. I know, oh, we, yeah. we, 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 we were filming, no, we were helping you shoot your photography. Yeah, so stuff. this time last year, we was all third year, oh, third day? year students. Now, nah, probably like a couple days like before. Couple, couple days couple before. Couple days after, yeah, a couple days after or before. Like, yeah, so. That was so good. That was so good. We. Yeah, like a year ago, we were third year students. Oh, gosh. Finishing Time up class. our last bits of coursework, getting ready to submit. Then, lockdown. Panoramic. Lockdown, COVID stuff happened. Do you even get to then film our short film? <coughs> Everything kind Bruv. of everything went in the air, and me and Noah spoke about this the last time. We were meant to speak about. It, we kind of just spoke about it, like just, we just talked about everything. But it's been a, it's been a mad little bit. Like I was I was thinking I was talking to Jason on the way here. Um, I feel like now knowing what I do, I feel like I take it much more seriously now, knowing that I've had the lockdown to really reflect on what like, has happened before, things that went massively wrong. Mm. <coughs> You're talking about creatively or? Everything. Okay. But before creatively, it's like within myself. Mm. First, looking at what man's not good at. Man's not good at communicating. Let me fix that with people. Mm. Yeah. Man's sometimes can't take accountability. Let me let me take a look at that. Take a look at myself because I need to be able to know that if I'm taking this as a career and I'm doing like what I want to do like being a photographer being a digital creator and just being able to be out here <coughs> to a certain level of realness I've got to be with myself first and foremost yeah. and I feel like if lockdown didn't happen if certain things didn't happen last year would I be sitting here taking this stuff as seriously no I feel mm-hmm. like I'll just be living it on a wing yeah. but I feel like as we said we've been forced to rethink plan A is still plan A you know Plan B doesn't like the plan B is like never a thing where you have to resort to plan B, but plan A is still there. It just means that because of what's happened, you have to adapt. Mm -hmm. And that's the most important thing is being able to adapt in this time. (coughs) Me and you have spoken, me and Noah have spoken on the phone. We all have learning how to adapt even in the most digital age possible, having to adapt even more to creating digital content. It was so like, so me and Jason, we are doing a we're doing a project at the moment, and yeah. we can't. We're not gonna go into too much detail about the contents of it, but like even the whole thing with like organizing shoots through a lockdown period, yeah, and knowing how me and Jason like work together, like he likes to put stuff out, I like to put stuff out. We all have our own different style, and because lockdown came about, it took a massive dent in the consistency of the project because yeah. it had an incredibly good momentum. And <clears throat> this was the maddest thing. We wanted to get this out publicly, commercially, end of January. Yeah, end of January, innit? Yeah, full So now we haven't shot since the end of November. Yeah. And it's so jarring. It was like, I know there's still shoots going on and everything, but those were mostly like studio shoots because even shooting outside on like road, it's like, you can actually get fined for that. Yeah. But still, I do want to take the risk because now I'm thinking it's going to come up to two months Well, that we're into this year and we still haven't shot once. So it's like, I do want to keep shooting this, but you just have to be around everything. But hopefully next month, Boris actually lifts some restrictions. Like people can go to park with a friend that we can like, Start shooting. We can take, take yeah. from there. I said this on yeah. I said this on the last episode. It's like we've been forced to adapt to a situation we were never prepared for. Like mm-hmm. there's a difference between yeah, coming out of coming out of uni and you know, finding your feet in regular society, right? Yeah. Deeper. We 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 just think about like last year. We had to finish our degrees in a pandemic yeah. and then come out in still within the pandemic and figure out what we're going to do with our lives, 
what we're going to do creatively and all of that. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's like, there's so many like restrictions placed on us. And the fact that we got to, like right now, mentally, you got to celebrate the small victories you can. Mm -hmm. It's, it's very easy to look at, to be doom and gloom and look at like things happening around you and be like, right, I'm not where I need to be. But this is not your fault. This is none of our fault. This is something we were never prepared for. <coughs> so don't be complacent, but like take pleasure in the small victories you can get. Take and um, be grateful that you've put out a, a, a piece of content here and there. Even yeah. if it's not what you want, you've done something. You've taken a step forward. Yeah. So it's like perspective is a really important thing. Sometimes you got to take what you can to get what you want. 100%. By the same time when you're deep, it's like, it's how you come out of lockdown now. Yeah. So you've had this whole period to just be yourself and like just learn about yourself. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of people are making content now, putting out stuff like doing home shoots, everything. But it's like how you come out of this lockdown is going to determine your future properly. So it's like be applying for jobs during lockdown, be trying to build this skill, be trying to do that, do that. <coughs> and it's just like after lockdown, you might be getting like job offers here and there. Mm -hmm. And the next minute that like, people ask you to work with them and then all that stuff is like, just make sure you're in the right mindset right now. Don't be feeling upset or anything about lockdown and being in this situation. Just be trying to build on yourself. Get to know yourself actually. Because mm -hmm. that's the best thing about lockdown. You're actually but by yourself. Like the amount but still have the communication with your friends that you need. The amount of like mental discovery, like the mental journey I've been on in this lockdown. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've found out things about myself that I never knew. And having that time alone can be daunting because you're alone with your own thoughts. But once you like take time and really like piece together like what what you want, as forget like career wise, what you want, what you stand for as a human being. And you really take that time to investigate yourself. I'm telling you, you see the world in a different place because now yeah, not to say that you let go of bitterness, but like you accept yourself and you know yeah. what you're willing to stand for and what you're willing to tolerate. And it's yeah. like, now things don't bug you because you have that reassurance within yourself. It's kind of, it's <clears> kind of like, okay, this person clearly doesn't align with what I want. It's not personal. which is not meant to be cool. We go our separate ways. And that's like friendship, romantically, Listen, businessly. Like I was saying, mm -hmm. recently it's all civil. And it's just like, if people like, one thing, like we've all done a lot of growing up mm -hmm. and I feel like it's bit, been a lot of, I don't want to say forced to growing up because we're still like, we're, we're, I'm 22, you know. So for, there's a lot of other 22 year olds that are in a lot more better positions than me. 100% great, good, great for them. But I feel like me being able to understand first and foremost, like raw, I am so dedicated to what I want to do. I know that everything that I want to do will take time. I know that I have to be my own biggest critic i know that i have to be my own best friend i know that i need to be able to pick myself up when i need to you know i feel like it's just like you know what knowing that you can't disappoint yourself like i always say like why the fuck aren't you going hard for yourself mm. like that you owe it to yourself like to do the best you actually possibly can with what you have for yourself because it will get better like, why why aren't you doing that for yourself? Like, you can go so much harder. And it doesn't mean pushing yourself to, the, like, to a form of breaking point, but it's, like, consistently gnawing at something. Because I was saying this to one of our, like, one of my our friends. I'm not going to mention his name. Um, but, like, he was just saying how, like, he was struggling to sort of, like, you know, be creative in this time, you know? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, he's working and, you know, it is difficult, 100%. And people think, oh, if I want to dedicate time to my crea creativity, I, I have to, you know, spend like three, four hours a day, you know. To just, sometimes maybe people think they don't have that time. But, like, if you just break it down simply, yeah. All right, calm, two hours a day <coughs> for seven days, 14 hours in a week you know, so on and so forth. Like, by the end of the month, you've learned something completely new. Like, it all depends on how you want to, like, angle it. I feel like people too much put too much pressure on themselves unnecessarily. Yeah. It's because of comparison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of the time. 100%. It's because of comparison. It's like, with social media, yeah, there's a, there's a beauty and, like, a curse to social media. Social media will, like, present you with a lot of information and maybe stuff, opportunity that you didn't realise you could have, but also social media... Like 
kind of put pe- people in a position where they want to compare themselves. Yeah. And it's kind of like, what you got to look at is cool. You may, like, for example, we have a podcast right now. There are thousands of other podcasts. Yeah. And I'm sure there's there's stuff I could definitely learn from other podcasts. But I have to understand that the journey of the rare podcast is going to be different to the journey of other podcasts. Yeah. And they say, like, comparison is the thief of all joy. And I believe that. Yes. Because sometimes it's like you can be... You can want to live the life that somebody else lives, but you don't understand the role they took to get there. Yeah. And the role they took may not be something you want to emulate, but all because you only see the end result, you're like, oh my God, I need that. I want to be them. And it's <clears> like, <throat> you kind of have to be, be open to soaking information, but you got to be tunnel vision. And that's why a lot of people that go on to like YouTube and that their work is always like the same. Because they're all trying to fight for the same thing, get the subscribers, get the views and everything, get people talking about their work. Mm -hmm. But it's like, if you keep looking at other people and everything that they're doing, it's just going to make you hate what you're actually doing. Exactly. Because you can go from loving something to then hating it because you're always in a competition with someone else who doesn't even know that you're trying to compete with them. And if if your work is inauthentic, if you're playing the numbers game and the numbers don't go your way, you're going to be more disappointed rather than... um, Everything I believe, everything you do should be a labor of love. Yeah. If you're not, if you don't have like a motivating factor, that's not money. If you if you have a motivating factor, that's just about passion and not you know social acclaim or views or whatever. And you're just genuinely driven by your love for the craft. Yeah. I think that will that will take you far because at the end of the day, you always have that to fall back on. Even okay. if there's setbacks to your channel, even if like your channel doesn't reach where you want it to go, because you have that innate desire to put out content within you, you're gonna keep doing it. Versus if you're just doing it for, you know, quick um, quick clout, quick, quick social acclaim, quick money, you're going to be vastly disappointed when it doesn't go your way. Yeah. So I think with anything you do, like even, and this doesn't even apply to creativity. I know a hell of people in uni that are doing courses that don't, that they don't want to do simply because um, of potential earnings yeah. or simply because of the expectation placed on them by their parents or stuff like that. And obviously... Listen, do what you gotta do. We live in a capitalist society, you gotta make money. But bare minimum, like wake up happy with what you're doing because you can be making a certain amount of money, you can achieve the quote unquote goals you have, but if you're not motivated by something deeper, at the end of the day, all of it, all of that's gonna fizzle away. Mm. Yeah. I get that. All that's gonna fizzle away. But yeah, like like what's creatively or What's inspired you during this pandemic? Like, it, it, maybe not even creatively, but socially, just something that's like you've looked at and been like, raw, like that's motivated me to. I feel like just seeing the amount of shows that are coming out right now and just like even researching about the people who make it, it just makes me feel like, raw, like this is the field that I want to go into. I want to tell stories. I want to like just keep on putting out content that people like go through, but it's not actually out there. So it's like the whole euphoria thing. He put out a TV show about a teenager drug addict that <coughs> related to him and so many other people that are addicts in this world. And then that's why everybody loves it. And there's also like just watching movies and TV shows like that, Euphoria, what do you call it? Malcolm and Marie, um, Moonlight Again, The Queen of Slim. It's just seeing the way they tell story with the camera work and everything. That just makes me want to be a storyteller. So I feel like just seeing other people's work instead of feeling like, oh, wow, why am I not like that right now? I was just more inspired by it. Yeah. And that's why I've realised about Tyler Perry now. Tyler, bruv, be, bruv, Tyler Perry movies, yeah. I'm, I'm going to spend the podcast slandering him, but bruv. I think it's the art. Disgraceful. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sir. That was, those are the words of Jason. I feel like what's yeah, motivating <laughs> me in this, uh, in this lockdown is the art of consistency. I think that's huge. It's not easy. Especially in this day and age where you go day by day and a lot of people went from having a whole routine, whole lifestyle to having it completely taken away from them. And it's hard to have and to it's hard to develop those type of that motivation to get back into that routine. But I feel like what's really taught me is like me being consistent every week, every single day, waking up early, you know, going to work, you know, like doing shoots, mm. you know, doing all of those things, like it's created like a ability for me to be like, you know what? I'm willing to do this for the next 10 years. Yeah. 
I wanted to do this for the next 20 years. I wanted to do this for, you know, the foreseeable future. And that's like, I said, I've always said this next 10 years is going to be the most important 10 years of our lives. Yeah. The, 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 the 20, 2020s are going to be the most important years of our lives. Like, that's, I feel like this is where we're going to see the most societal changes. This is where we're going to see the most, like, economic changes, everything. And we just have to be able to be consistent and adapt through it and take it how it comes. Because yeah. us being the small individuals we are, we can't make a change to it. But if we can at least be able to create something that we can put into that, put into society, then give back to society. I feel like in the next 10 years, like, we can... I feel like people, just, you have to be able to want to work for it. I feel like if you know you're willing to give the next 10 years of your life to to this or to your craft or to your journey to be able to get what you want out of it. If you're willing to do that time, you've won. Yeah. For me, what I've realised is like, not I've realised kind of like what I want to do. And... Having it's funny having something taken away from you can oftentimes realize how much you miss it. Oh, one, and one, like 100%. this, like what we're yeah, doing yeah. right now. Because when we were in uni, right, we were recording at every. It was a routine, like record every week, every Wednesday. Every Wednesday, then we edit. Probably no, we bring back the equipment on Thursday. We oh, edit on the weekends, yeah. and then like it just, was a just for context. Yeah, we at our university that we went to. We had the ability to have. We had so much resources that we Ruff. had at our disposal Ruff. that we actually took for granted. Because you um. know, you know why. And I'll say this now, yeah. To be able to first and foremost, if you're a university student this year or in your first year of uni or whatever, my heart actually goes out to you for yeah. real. Because to make people spend nine thousand pound on FaceTime lectures. Is actually criminal. criminal. And a lot it's, of people are doing it's it disgusting. Home. Like you know what, man was. We can at least say we were fortunate to know. Yeah, by the time lockdown came about, lectures were actually pretty much done. Yeah, yeah. we didn't even have to go in anymore. Just pretty to go much. in to go see our like um, our lecturers, like one on one type stuff. Yeah. But we didn't have lectures yeah. like that anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But to say like we had so much resources, like I'm talking photography studios. Mm dark rooms, computer suites, editing suites. Music studios. Music studios. Oh, it's jarring because you know? like, the, even the equipment stuff, like I always think I could have filmed like bare short films. Because remember when Andrews, um, Howard, no, Andrews, he said, what do you call it? During this time, yes, we're going to be doing your final film, but at the same time, be outside and shooting your own films. Because you don't really, you know what is you don't, when you're in it, like you don't realise that you're going to miss this stuff because like I said, like, coming to you and you have all this equipment for you and it's like okay like it's cool it's here it's there but then like, when you're without it it's like because well, lockdown just came like that yeah that that made that made the end of third year really difficult and right. you know what it, it it and i can understand why a lot of people really got heartbroken with like the first lockdown because imagine you're a third year student and you have to depend on the resources that we had to depend on so mm-hmm. you know you know imagine you spent three years just amounting up to this moment you're about to do your final project and everything gets stripped and taken away from you. It's it's that's devastating. And that's like this is a piece of this is a body of work that you want to create, that you want to show employers. Like I feel like that's one thing as well that's I've learned throughout this lockdown is being able to say, like, what I'm doing now is something that I have manifested myself yeah. from the ground up. As mm-hmm. in like I planted the seed put the soil down, I watered my plant every single day. And I feel like knowing that I'm I'm nobody. I'm a small little speck on a, on a massive board. But at the end of the day, knowing that I've made something, yeah, that I've taken the time and been like, I want to think about this every single day. Like, man's, man has dreams about, like, photography in that, G. And, like... My my digital stuff, my digital like, graphic art and stuff like that. I think about it every single day and have that level of consistency, yeah. And just always be able to think about it. You, you got to be able to think about how can you be able to improve every single day. What did you not do good yesterday that you want to make a priority today? 
those type of things. And it's not, it's like, it's not every day you feel like you have to think, you think this positively because there are some days where the universe might be against you and like, you, you're just, you just have a shit day. You know what I mean? But it's just one of those things that you've got to know, like during this time, you just got to be your best own best friend. You got to pick yourself up. You dust yourself down and you got to keep it stepping because at the end of the day, like if you're not going to do it for yourself. Who's going to do it for you? That's it. Like that's just the the real the, that's the, the realistic aspect of it. You know what I mean? It's crazy, man. Because it's like I came into this pand- I came like into this pandemic thinking like, raw, like obviously, like I knew what I wanted to do, but like having things just strip, like having being away from the microphone, cameras, being away from all of that made me deep. Like, so I can't wait to get back in. Like I can't wait to be just. In the in my element, and it's like even like there'll be times here. It's gonna sound weird, but there'll be times I'll be at my home, I'll be at home, I'll go something on social media, and I'm like, oh, that'll be a great discussion. That'll be a mm. great conversation. Like, that's why. That's why I'm even like, that's why I'm even on like Clubhouse twenty four seven because I'm like, I crave discussion. Like I create, like I love this type of stuff. Clubhouse as well. It's very, it's interesting. Like. You can get everything there. I saw you a get, room of writers. Listen, Rough. listen. Writers. Clubhouse is it's a. When, when did people start jumping at the beginning of the year in it? No, like December. Really? I didn't. I don't really hear people talking about it in December. Like, like that. No, it wasn't December. It was the beginning of the year. Are you sure? Yes, yeah, bro. Different. I can't. I, di- I didn't hear about Clubhouse. Was on Clubhouse in December. I didn't hear about no, Clubhouse I remember, until I remember until January. December. Uh, I'll tell you off camera, but December. I remember December. I don't know the right word. But yeah, no, nah, it's it's a, I've been in a few little creative rooms mm. yeah. where like people have been able to discuss like opportunities and just like conversate with people. It's a good little platform. I feel like once again, if you, if you look deep enough on that platform, you'll find something. You'll find what you're looking for. Yeah. And it's one of those things that's just like <laughs> what I mean, you'll find what you're looking for. You'll find anything about any type of discussion about any topic. Bro, that's social media in general though. You see when people like paint, obviously social media has its good and bad parts, but the mm-hmm. thing is, social media is what you make of it. And it, like you can find, like do you know how many, through social media, how many people I found on social media in the creative industry and literally, I've just reached out and been like, yo, I'll mess with your content. They may mess with mine. And literally, you can, bri- you can build so many bridges by just yeah. curiosity. And the things when people come and say social media is this, social media is that, I get it. That's an aspect of it. But the other aspect of it, it's a massive tool for you to utilize. Mm-hmm. Because the way you choose to be on social media, Facts. that's why the people that are always complain about it are always complaining because they chose to be on that type of side of social media. Facts. Like you could be using social media for like just, as you were saying, getting to know people um, try in the industry, mm-hmm. trying to build relationships, or you could be using it just it's to be like talking nonsense. I just. Bruv. Like Do you I've, love and I've built like relationships with people through social media mm. that are like those are my people. Yeah, and you have even met them like it's just well. it's just like I feel like you, you got, got to be able, to, huh? No, I said I was shouting at my homie Chidera. Oh, photographer. oh photographer. Yeah, big up her fam. She's sick. Yeah, let's continue. She is a good photographer. Chidera she's, shots. Chidera, yeah. bruv, she's sick, fam. Yeah, she's like, so, she's, she's cool, sick. Bro. She's sick. The camera's so nice as well. Yeah, oh, man. Detail. I big, up every, big up every time. But continue, bro. Um, what was it? What was I gonna say? I think. What was it? Sorry, I can't remember. You were saying? I can't even remember, fam. We're talking about social media. Yeah. Oh yeah, social media. Like I just feel like it just it's just your level of interaction with people. Like I done a um, like I done a collage post. Uh, just tagged Tiffany Calver in it, and she reposted it. Shout out Tiffany, um, it's your body. DJ, oh, yeah, isn't it? DJ, yeah, Radio One DJ, and um, I just messaged her saying, "Yo, Tiffany, like I'm a, like, I'm a, because I am, I generally am a big fan of like, you know what it is, like UK DJs right now, like a lot of them are coming up, up and coming, and yeah. like it's just it's a good thing to see because you don't see like a lot of younger DJs like." have a proper platform anymore like that type of thing i feel like djs have kind of almost kind of gone not obsolete but kind of like they're not as they're not like 
yeah. as respected as much. I feel like so they're I not as like, integral to the culture. Yeah, the I feel like that's how it is, and I f- yeah. like it's nice to be able to see like them getting the recognition that they deserve. So I literally, this message is saying, listen, I'm a massive fan of your work. Mm-hmm. Like, let's keep doing like you because it's just like you got to be able to express your admiration for these people whilst you whilst you can because it's just like. Hey. Bro, like always, I always believe like Joe Biden says this in his podcast, and I always believe always start with love. Always start, always just start by showing appreciation and love. Yeah, because it'll get you far. Because like it's, it's it's a genuine feeling. You can't fake it. Well, let's see. How do you feel about Joe Biden? Genius. Oh, like I I I think Joe Biden like creatively like what he what he does with his platform. He knows. Think about Joe Biden. He talks about like as a content creator, self worth all the time mm-hmm. and that message is very important now his delivery can improve but yeah 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 his, deli- what? his delivery can improve is, but yeah. the message what you what you like what's what you get past the harsh delivery the message i don't feel like he's very mindful yeah and i say i don't feel like he's being mindful of what he says on this obviously like i understand the message yeah because when like when you're just being when you're just spitting straight facts and just being realistic about something it can come across very blunt and very rude mm-hmm. and it seems like you don't really like you don't really care that much about like being mindful on that mm-hmm. but like yeah this seems like for me because i've been told you should be like careful with how you say things oh. in a certain way so i feel like the way he says things sometimes it can be like you know what i understand what you're saying but man can't listen to you too much yeah i, feel I can't listen to you too tough like it's just like too much too much aggression like mm-hmm. There's a lot. He sounds like he's angry. Yeah, that he, that's how he is, isn't it? That's how he is. But anyways, people, it's been a great, great, great return episode. We are back, baby. We're back still. The Rare Podcast is back. I forgot to sign up. Oh, yeah. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Sound, Spotify. <laughs> there, yeah, there it is. See, uh, see I'm busting this. I need to look at the camera. Oh, Listen. yeah, I forgot. Yeah. I'm not on SoundCloud anymore. I forgot that. We need to follow us on Twitter. Instagram, we are on Spotify and we are on iTunes. And of course, we are on YouTube. Shout out to the YouTube family there. This has been the Rare Podcast. We are signing out. Deuces. Peace. Catch you on the next one. Peace, guys. Y'all niggas got me hot.